What up, what up? Here we are with another episode of the Who's Where podcast. I'm your host coming to you live from Lexington, Kentucky, Chase Minifield. We appreciate everybody rocking with us. We're back with another episode, another fire episode. Got Max Million back on the line. What's good, Max? What's up, world? Back here in Charlottesville as always, man. Happy to be back uh, for another another episode. Going to be a good one. Awesome, man. We got a special guest, Max. Introduce our guest. Yeah, special guest. going to be our first uh, current UVA athlete, scholarship DB. Um, starter for, for the Virginia Cavaliers. We've got my man, Cohen King. This is our first current player on the Who's Where podcast. So this is kind of like, you know what I'm saying, Who's Now? You know what I'm saying? It's Who's <laughs> Now podcast right now. You know what I'm saying? So we're going we gonna to just drop this off. But, um, you know, fellow DB in the building. So that's what's up, man. Um, of course, man, introduce yourself. Give us a little background on yourself and uh, just introduce yourself to everybody, all of our listeners. Sir, um, yeah, my name is Cohen King. Um, I'm from Culpeper, Virginia. I'm an older brother to two. My dad is a, a track athlete. He ran track at T.C. Williams back in the day. Um, my younger brother's name's Ashton. Uh, he runs track as well down at Eastern View in Culpeper. My youngest brother's name Ian. He plays basketball. Um, I went to Eastern View. I played uh, one year of football there. I ran track three years. Walked on at UVA, uh, lightly recruited, lightly recruited. It was just a in-school visit. Uh, and then I just decided I couldn't beat going to a big school. You know, I had, I had some confidence in myself to um, try to get a scholarship from walking on. And come my third year, fall camp, got the scholarship and ended up starting the last five games of the, se- of the season. Dope. Man, yeah. so uh, one year of football in high school? Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> And so what's your, what's your, what made you want to play? Oh, so I grew up, I grew up playing football um, all my life. You know, I, I'm a younger age from my group. So I started when I was four years old playing flag, uh, just local ball. Yeah. And um, all the way up until I played all the way up until my high school freshman year and uh, ended up having a bad concussion and my mom pulled me. Okay. And, uh, mm. Yeah. You can't let that get out. You can't let that get out, man. That your mom was pulling you out the, out the <laughs> off the team, man. Yeah. Hey, I'm telling everybody that. I'm telling everybody that it wasn't me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she pulled me my freshman year, and then uh, come back uh, my sophomore year. Um, I got into the flow of running track. I did long jump, and I got into my groove of doing that. I got pretty good at that, and I didn't play tenth grade or eleventh grade, and then. Some of my homeboys just dragged me into doing it again my senior year. I thought I was going to go to school for, you know, just going to school. Yeah. Just do some cool stuff. And then it ended up doing pretty good that year. Word. That's mm-hmm. what's up, man. So I guess, like, my first question would be, like, was it difficult to, like, get back into the swing of things after being off of football? Because, you know, football is like a a um, a feeling. You know, it's a feeling. It's an instinctual game, especially a cornerback. I know – that um, I'm not going to say what what y'all kind of covered is y'all planning all those different type of things, but it's a lot of instincts, right? Especially if you especially if you back there in zones, mans, whatever it is, it's a lot of instincts that's built up over time. So essentially, your lack of um, I guess reps uh, at the position. Uh, did you play corner in high school? In high school, I uh, started off as safety. I played like two, three games at corner though. Yep. Okay, cool. And you're corner right now, right? Safety right now. Safety right now. Okay, cool. So essentially, like. How has that experience been of just like trying to catch up from people that have been playing since they was probably four and haven't missed a season all the way that's until, right. you know, they're not, they're now currently not missing a season. By far. Yeah. That by far, that's the word. That was the hardest thing coming in. Um, you know, just like you get in there first day and they're saying like, I, that is funny, but I didn't play Matt. I don't play Madden like that. So they're yelling out cover four, cover three, cover two. In high school, you know, it's not even – they don't call it all these crazy things. They just say, like, we might run cover two, cover three. But I got there, and then that lack of just just knowledge of calls like cover six and knowing what to do when I do that. And once I got thrown into one-on-ones, I've never – like, I never have done a one-on-one because I didn't go to any camps. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't do one-on-ones in high school practice. So I was getting – I was getting torched. I was getting destroyed. <laughs> Hey, that's, what, that's, where, that's where that story sounded like it was going. <laughs> that's where it sounded like it was going. The first one on ones and the, um, you know, what I'm saying if that freshman they get the worst of the one on one, especially right out the gate, because you know that uh, the vets about to jump up there and they about to try to try to give you that sauce. 
up there, knowing you a little green. Day was out there. We had people, man. I was like, wow. It was yeah, that was the hardest job. That's what's up, man. So what what was the what were some of the reasons why you decided to come to UV? I know you said like it was a small like you didn't it was a bigger school compared to some of the smaller schools that you may have been looking at, but mm-hmm. you know you're from Culpeper. It's right. It's it's close. You know most of the people that end up at I mean like I think out of all my teammates, I think Culpeper might have been the person. If you didn't live in Charlottesville, I think the cl- next close was Culpeper, <laughs> at least from my <laughs> bicep. So um, is give us some of the reasons why you decided to come and how's your experience been like when your first day stepping on campus as a freshman. Yeah, um, academically, I don't think you can beat this school, honestly. Uh, on this, like, from the vicinity that I'm in, I don't think you can beat this school. Uh, a huge thing for me is staying close to home, too. Um, my first year when I didn't travel to away games, uh, I went home almost every weekend, honestly. Like, yeah. I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even stay here and do any anything really that much. Um, yeah, uh, the other schools that were trying to get at me were, uh, like, JMU talked to me about a walk-on offer, some smaller D2 schools. And I just, honestly, it came down to what school I think is academically the best and how close it is. So those are my two biggest things. Word. Um, and what did you kind of want to get into academically? Well, hold on. Before we get into academic, let's just start. We're talking about Culpepper. You know, there's a guy that was in my class who's the who's the, who's the GOAT of Culpepper. You know what I'm saying? If ain't nobody else going to say it, I'm going to say it. Uh, you know, he had um, – had McDonald's meals named after of them. Had the poster in the McDonald's, the local McDonald's. How many? How many McDonald's y'all got at Cold Pepper? One. Yeah, yeah. So he told me like he was in the. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He had like the little print, a little printout, a little printout joint right next to Mickey D. Um. So you know, Big Terrence Fells dancer man, four star recruit, gotta be the pride of Cold Pepper. So if y'all are going around Cold Pepper and y'all don't know about old Terrence Fells dancer, you know what I'm saying? Then we gonna have to we gonna have to educate. We gotta educate, man. Terrence yeah. Field, hey, I just I know I know his brother, I know Damien, but I don't know hey, you much know about Damien. Him. Yeah, I know me and Tank, we call him Tank, but okay. me and Tank are really close. Yeah. Uh that's funny. I don't even know much about him, but we got some work in the off season, but I haven't I haven't even talked to Terrence like that. No. Hey man, Terrence, hey, hey, what I heard is that's the that's the legend of the cold pepper space. So you 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 follow this <laughs> some in some big full st- footsteps, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you might be. I, I'm not gonna. I don't know the history. I don't know the roster. It might be some people that been from Culpeper, but from Terrence, you the first, you the next person I've heard from Culpeper <laughs> since Terrence. So, so that's where the connection is on my side, man. Is you the next person in Culpeper? You the second in line. Um, but just to give everybody an update on my man Terrence, man, that he goes by the Beast now, and he just recently fought at Rough and Rowdy, got that win, um, got that win for the yeah. UVA, UVA yeah. folks. We all tuned in and watched it. Max streamed it. Everybody got on the Zoom and uh, watched Terrence compete. So it was good to see him catch up. Man, he looked good. He looked good. Looked like he's in shape. You know, people like – I ain't going to name no names, but people, a lot of people from my class is, is losing their shapes. Losing their shapes, man. <laughs> Ter- Terrence came in the ring and he looked good, man. He looked good. He looked solid. So, Max, you know, that's one of your fellow fullbacks. Um, you got anything to say about the Beast? Yeah, man. I mean, I, I, would, I would like to see a little bit more, uh, I don't know, finesse in the ring. You know what I'm saying? The ring looked like ice. And I can understand it was ice for everybody else, but everybody else was fine. He hit the ground a little bit too much for my, for my liking, man. You know what I'm saying? His we punches were a little wild. We had some yeah. wild punches. You know what I'm saying? A couple of haymakers. I'd like to see some more, some more, you know, tactic. Maybe yeah, a knockout. Man. I would expect listen. nothing. That, little, that, that guy looked like he didn't know what he was doing out there. Hey, listen, Terrence, there's a couple of things that I didn't want to see, and you didn't show none of those. So I appreciate the aggressiveness. I appreciate <laughs> no going backwards. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you didn't disappoint me, my man. Um, so, hey, 100% great, great show. Uh, it wasn't no, wasn't no backward steps. You know, if, if one thing with me and, uh, Cohen can probably appreciate this as a defensive guy. We don't go backwards. Ain't no good be no, you know what I'm saying? We, we go facing the fan out here and Cohen's a safety. I don't know how much facing the fan he's doing, but you know what I'm saying? We're supposed to be putting, <laughs> supposed to be putting our face in the fan out there, man. So I respect, uh, Terrence going out there, man, putting on the show. Um, so Cohen, did you know anything about that, man? You 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 have any idea that that Terrence fighting in Rough and Rowdy recently? Have you ever heard of Rough and Rowdy? No, I don't even I don't even know what that you is. Know what that is? So it's like about like, bar stool. That's it. Yeah, it's a boxing match, yeah, and yeah. it's a whole bunch of amateurs. And uh, <laughs> Terrence, you know, he he signed up. They picked him, and he went in there. He fought somebody, uh, got him a good win. So he wanted to know. He going for the belt next fight. 
So we we'll see when he's when he's going on. We got to get some coverage from UVA coverage because he's actually I'm using going the, to purse. If it's open up, I'm going to purse. Hey, but he's using the UVA name, so we got to get it streaming. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, our page, our page might have to have a YouTube stream or something going on like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we gotta get around. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta uh, all rally around the cold paper, cold pepper's finest. You know what I'm saying? So uh, shout out to my man Terrence. All right, so Cohen, what are you studying, man? Let's jump back into this. What are you studying? Uh, government and politics. And why did you choose government and politics? How many other, how many other uh, kids on the team on government and politics? Um, I know a few in my class. I'm not sure um, how how many other on the entire team are, but uh, I've always been, I've always been into the politics, just like more like political thought stuff uh, than like government jobs. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's pretty much, pretty much. That's pretty much the reason. What are you trying to, what are you, what is your kind of goal for like post UVA? What is your, what is your goal in that space? I, man, that I struggle with, um, with that, honestly. Um, but the good thing is a lot of the, uh, our academic coordinators are setting us up with this thing. It's called Pathways U, uh, mm -hmm. where we get in like touch with like alum from like a lot of different jobs and like oh secret, really yeah Secret oh, Service cool. contractors and they set that stuff up for us like every week and we can like get on a Zoom call get in the information session so I get in those a lot. I'm just There's a whole bunch of UVA alumni. Yeah, all UVA alumni, most UVA alumni. Interesting. Hey, first of all, we gotta get on that chase number one, number two. They might have heard. Academic just... coordinator. They ain't reached out to. I ain't seen nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, saying. <laughs> man, you seen any news on that? I don't think. I ain't seen no right, news on no that. no. Yeah, uh, two couple of us alumni in Charlottesville right now. Man, they hit me up once. Man, that's crazy. <laughs> I gotta drive by. Yeah, you gonna have to drive by. You gonna have to reintroduce yourself too. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Cohen cool, can you vouch for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh nah, that's a uh, that's what's up, man. So you um, you know, figuring out what are some of the cool people that you talk to on Pathway U? Are any that stood out, like one or two? Um, yeah, I talked to um uh he this guy was a um who was he? He was in finances. This is my this was like two years ago. I talked to him over the summer. Uh that was more with like internships, but I haven't done one of those yet. Uh, okay. Um, and last year with COVID, I couldn't do anything. Okay. Um, yeah, I was in touch. They allow you do internships now? They allow y'all do internships? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They uh they can waive like a week uh summer workouts once we get back because most of them are in like that June. Like, yeah. June. So people- Wave, known... wave workouts? We ain't, never, we ain't never heard of that. Yeah. Right, now, now, does it, does it uh, uh you know, you can answer how you want, but if you waive that week of workouts, is, is, is it frowned upon if you're a starter? Or is it like really- Actually, yeah. I feel like it is slightly. I'm, I don't that think, was, it, but I feel like just internally, I feel like it might be. Yeah, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. What you mean? <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got time for a guy over here missing workouts because he got an internship. You know what I'm saying? You gotta find out hey, in the spring. Man, I just gotta find out, Chase. Because hey, we didn't even have that option. Hey, exactly. Like, we, hey, we had a, we had a coach where hey, listen, Cohen and them they winning more games than what we was winning, so it might be a little bit more lenient. But when you losing games. <laughs> Listen, we ain't got time for Max going over here to take a week off for uh, internships, man. But anyway, we're trying, to find, we're trying to get some things together. All right, like Alabama, all right, y'all go ahead and take a week off and find your little internships, but we over here trying to figure yeah. it out. And we all got to be in the same – we got to be in the same room to figure it out, man. So 100%. I don't know what you're talking about. So, <laughs> um, as a walk-on, when you first came, man, did you feel that you they really gave you a chance to earn a starting spot? I know you did, but, um, you know, sometimes – you know, their their scholarship players get preference of treatment no matter how you chill out. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, just to be like completely honest, they uh you get a chance to do something, but it's it's set in stone, you know, when you get there, they have from depth chart, they have the the starters and then they have the scholarship players and then right. the walk So right. I mean, that's expected because you know, they recruited these guys since sophomores and juniors in high school. So I mean that's expected, but mm. I, th I think, like, they give you chances because you get to go against, like, they call it the Mad Hatters now. It's the scout team. It's the victory team. Uh, that They look at – they pay attention to that. They watch film on the victory team. That's what they do here, so. Mad Hatters. First, yeah, that's what they call it, Mad Hatters. So you was balling out on the, on the, on the uh, scout team? And a, a story I remember from my, uh, my freshman year, it was our first day in uh, full pads, and we're not supposed to go to the ground. Uh, if we're not, I mean, on special teams. Oh, don't don't listen to that. But, yeah, 
I had to, man. I was trying to. I was trying to get my number. <laughs> hey, there's always a fine line, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, now we can't just be hitting anybody out here. But who'd you, who'd you take out to the ground, man? It was a nah. It was a punt block, and uh, oh, I was okay. rushing the edge, and somebody else was rushing the edge too. We both dove and just dove into each other head first, man. It was. Oh yeah, that's dangerous. One of our safe star safeties got hurt like that. Um, yeah. Rodney got hurt. He hurt his uh he hurt his knee on that joint. I think his uh, senior year. <coughs> wow, man, you can't hit the mute before you do that. <laughs> what kind of podcast we running over here, man? <laughs> hey, that's a mute, bro. Hey, man, that was slow mo, bro. <laughs> Post whenever you get done. You start doing other ventures, and man, hey, you gotta watch those kids close to you, man. I'm telling you, ain't nothing changed. Um, so essentially, man, I gotta um, so. Yeah, you walk on, you come in, you are fighting for a spot, um, you know, playing hard on the on the scouts, on the special on the special teams, I'm sure. And um, you know, when do you feel like you first got your you was first starting to get recognized or, or getting getting seen? Like you felt like you wasn't just like probably like 120. What number was you? 125? Yeah, something that deep. It was deep. <laughs> uh, um, so y'all know how they do. Y'all y'all heard about the uh, like the the number selection, how they do it here. Yeah, yeah, we've heard about it. Yeah. Um, so, I so, like, I got my number that third round. So, I thought, like, late – my my uh, first year, like, late during that fall camp, I got my number. Um, I thought I was – Is that, the third round good? Uh, first round is all returning starters. It's 22 picks, so it's all yeah. – all, Second round mm-hmm. is, like, backups. So, backups and, like, people who, like – so so hold on. I, I thought it was now nah, we starting to expose some things now. Hey, so, uh, hey, yeah. Listen, all right. So I thought it was how hard people's working in the summer. You say <laughs> you saying as a you saying there's a little bit of more of a uh, you know what I'm saying? Cause I know some starters that didn't work too hard. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know some starters that didn't work too hard, and I know they wasn't about to get stuck with number 98, you know what I'm saying, playing uh playing corner, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But number 98 play wide receiver, even though we do got a 98 play wide receiver right now, something like that. But um uh, essentially like <laughs> Playing quarter or playing quarterback too. Yeah, it's a little bit. It's a little bit more of a science to that, huh? We making sure the starters at least got some sweet numbers. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's squad leaders. They have like the squad leaders that choose. It's uh like by position group. Right. And they all get together and they choose like, oh yeah, this person this week, this person this week. So okay, interesting. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Um. So yeah, man. How's the um? Uh, how is everything going? Like, what's your transition been like for school? Let's talk outside of football. Like, how is the school? How is culture? Are you finding ways to network outside of the football team? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, that pathways you. That that's a that's amazing right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's weekly stuff. Like it's weekly um, stuff that we can get into. Uh, school wise, that online stuff. That's that's a struggle. That's been a struggle, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, I learn better when I can just when I have to go somewhere. So when I'm at home, I have you know we don't have to have our we're not supposed to have our cameras when I have my game here. I have yeah. my phone next to me and, you know, my bed's right there. You know, it's, that's a struggle, you know. How do they check classes right now? Um, Some people have to get like a, like a thing. You have to send like your attendance in to them, like a picture or something that you were oh, in class. Picture. Uh, yeah. Oh, picture yeah. <laughs> you imagine a class check now, uh, back then, Chase, if we was doing a virtual class? <laughs> oh, ain't no class check. But we used to miss class check real person right. class. Oh, yeah. Ain't no such thing as a class check for virtual class. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, as long as you logged in, shoot, you can be right. anywhere. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, no, that's that's what's up, man. But essentially, what I wanted to get at it was like, are you able to network outside of the football team? So not necessarily like the alumni and pathways you, but like, do you know anybody, or are you like finding relationships outside of? the football team that may be valuable outside of sport, like after your career is done after that, um, are, are you going to like events that not just like where football players are going to events? Like, are you trying to, you know, put yourself in uncomfortable spaces where, you know, you might not know too many people at UVA, but you know, UVA's network so strong and the people that you're going to school with right now are going to be people that impact the community um, in multiple areas, you know, going forward. So one of the things that I always say, I fell short at was getting outside of the football community and starting to like have some relationships and knowing some people that weren't necessarily in my inner circle. Um, so how has your experience been with that so far? And your, 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 this is about to be your fourth year. Yeah. Come my fourth year coming up. So three years in, how, how, how have you been doing with that, that process? 
Yeah, I'm I'm like that. I um my parents always made sure that it wasn't just sports. Like I'm not just hanging around, you know, those type of people, um, like my teammates and stuff. But um, yeah, when we're in person, I was I was out at I go to a lot of events, you know. Uh, I was in an African American studies class and they had speakers come like at six o'clock on a Thursday. I come, I would listen to those people um, come speak. Uh, I get out and talk to a lot of my classmates. I can't, I don't have exactly anything that like any yeah. professor, or anybody I like, like I've networked with other than like a friend or something like that. But yeah, I definitely, I'm definitely uh, trying to go outside of that. Yeah. yeah it's, definitely. It's, it's, um, it's definitely interesting thought process you know because you can definitely get caught up in the the football uh like environment you know what i'm saying and yeah. not necessarily get to get to do everything that university of virginia offers um yeah man so you know i guess kind of my next thing is like what, what are we looking like what's what's going like what what are what is the current status of university of virginia football how's training going um you know what, what is it what is everything looking like yeah so um we just we just uh got back into it. We were a weekend um last week. This is our second week uh one of workouts now. We have eight weeks of session. Uh yeah. I think we're looking good this year, honestly. You know, I think young uh last year we had a pretty young offense. Mm-hmm. Uh Brennan, he was that was his first starting as a quarterback first year. A lot of young receivers. We had Dontavian uh Wicks, who got hurt, was supposed to be beast this year uh defense we have a lot of return starters i feel like i feel like we're gonna be i feel like we're looking all right this year awesome do you, do you have any um aspirations of trying to play next level yeah 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 I do. awesome so what is like um you know is it going to be like you know because i figured like there's like three people in the locker room so my concept is there are three type of people in the locker room it's the person that is like all right i'm for sure going to get an opportunity to play in NFL, then it's the person in the locker room that's like, you know, I could have an opportunity to play in the NFL, um, and I definitely want to give it a shot. And then there's people like, all right, I know I'm just going to just start going into the into the workforce. Um, right. You know what I'm saying? So there's there's like those are like everybody in the locker room. One of those three is going to fit on somebody, right? Um, so you know, where do you feel like you fit into that space? And you know, how are you going to man- what's your plan to kind of maneuver in that space of opportunity that you have? Because you know. Plan next level is a small opportunity. And some people have a larger opportunity. Some people have no opportunity. Some people have a very slim opportunity. Yeah, I def I definitely agree with those that uh those three things. Um I would say, I would say as of right now, I am the second one. Just because, you know, uh like I've always I've always been trying to more work than like what our what what I can do on the field already. But I yeah. feel like my last few games I showed a little bit of what I can do when I'm on the field. But right now, I just take things day by day, like uh i set like a schedule each day try to get in before my workout stretch out before that get in after cold tub whatever uh i'm just taking those steps right now honestly um, yeah i work on my spring i work on my spring goals towards the end of winter workouts and i just do it like that honestly word that's what's up man max you got anything did you want to jump in on no nah, man that's 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 pretty good so i'm glad we're gonna be looking good uh good next year excited to hear that man so um but yeah, man, just just keep on it. Um, it sounds like you know uh, you got you know pretty good idea of what you want to do in the future, which is way better. A lot of people that third year, shoot, my third year, I had no idea, but um, it came quick. <laughs> I tell you that much, man. It came quick. So essentially, I don't, I want to jump into like post sports again. Um, like, if you could do, have you thought of anything that you could do like outside of like all right, we want to make it to the NFL. Of course, that'd be great. That's a nice little. That's a nice little. Uh, you know, job, high paying job. Um, but have you thought of anything like outside of that, outside of your internships and things of that nature? Like, have you ever thought of like real estate investing? Have you ever thought of like stock markets? Do y'all talk about those types of things nowadays? Like stock market investing? Cause you know, when we were in school, there was no such thing as Robin hood. No such thing as like, you know what I'm saying? I would have got that stipend and try to put it to work, <laughs> try to put it to work a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I've always, I've always struggled with that. Um, just growing up, like I've, I've never like, I feel like honestly, just in my head, there's a few, like, there's a few, and I may be wrong, but this is my opinion. There's like a few like occupations that you go to school, like for sure, you know what you're going to do. Yeah, I yeah. think it's like a doctor, a doctor, an engineer, anything like a doctor, yeah, yeah. an engineer, you know, anything like a certain computer science person, probably. Yeah. Yeah, 
Like, I feel like those yeah. are like, like, yeah. you know, like for when you for sure know what you're going to do when you get out. But I honestly, like, I thought about things like uh, my mom has a friend who's a, who's a, um, a government contractor. She writes contracts and she lives well. Yeah. Uh, that's partially one of the reasons I try to get into that. Um, my mom's a principal. I don't think I want to do anything in the school work. Uh, my mom knows a real estate agent. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what she was to me. Uh, my dad, he worked in like a, I can't remember what he used to work in, but now he owns his own barbershop. So I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure. Just, you don't have to actually really, you know what I'm saying, know what you're going to do. Most people don't know what they're going to do. Uh, yeah, you just kind of follow. You just kind of figure it out. You know, do what you do. Try some things. That I don't like this. I don't want to do that. And go down that go down that path. But you know, that's an interesting concept. Like, I wonder if anybody's invest- taking that stipend and flipping it on the stocks, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, uh, with GameStop and stuff, I know a lot of people are just trying to get into that. Oh yeah. Last few months, yeah. Word. Yeah, that's what's up. Um, have they talked about anything? Have y'all talked about anything with like um, athletes getting paid at all? Like have oh, they yeah. talked have they talked to you guys about that? What's kind of the story behind athletes getting paid for their likeness, et cetera? Um uh, they compensated pretty well now, right? I mean, y'all got numbers. I think they, they get like almost double what we got, Chase, back then. We didn't get that. They've started uh, like housing and stuff like that, like cost of living and all that. They get all that. Housing and books. That get I mean, obviously that just goes up over time. But essentially, like it's and obviously y'all still turn the receipts and stuff like that to um get the receipts whatever so yeah, yeah that type of situation but i'm talking about like the actual like paying of athletes like which is like a national conversation in legal law other type of thing you talking about governing and politics like that's something that is like a conversation as far as like should athletes be paid how do they get paid and i think they just pass it to where they are going to get some type of payment for likeness use of like jersey sales i don't know that's just in california that's just in california yeah all right, Colin, what have, they, have, they, have y'all had that talk as a team? And has anybody discussed it with you guys? As a group, no. But since last year, since they first brought it up, they've been sending out emails weekly. And they uh, they actually, like, gave us, like, an opportunity, like, anybody who wanted to, like, hear more about it, like, throughout, like, weekly, yeah. uh, to sign up for it. I signed up for it. And uh, pretty much they, they've they been moving forward. But, like, I think it was a few months ago. I could be wrong. A few months ago or, like, something like that they uh they actually had to take a step back because they like they realized how much more was to it because like with like some could use as like health insurance uh like how much you get paid for doing a certain thing like say like a commercial or like a jersey like where you're at what team what school you go to yeah. it's a lot a lot of stuff i haven't i haven't kept up with it as recent, recent so here goes a good question though you've you've been on both sides of the fence right You've been a, you've been a walk on where nobody really cared that you you know see you know I was <laughs> nobody was even worried about you now you got to start an opportunity where you're on the jumble trying you know what I'm saying those two differences right there so essentially if there was money involved essentially you would be you know making very peanuts on this side and you would be having an opportunity to make a decent little you know something on this side so how is your opinion on should athletes get paid um, and and what contacts would you think that system would work? Well, this is the thing. As a walk-on, I thought it was surprising that y'all got stipends. Okay. So when, I heard, when I heard about that, I was like, "Like that's crazy." I didn't know people got like a thousand dollars or something, whatever they get a month. And uh, but on this, I actually, I think this could be good. You know, people bring bring so much money to the school. Mm-hmm. And like, in a sense, you're getting paid at some point because if you're good enough, you're gonna you're gonna go somewhere. But I think it's a good. I think it's a good start to it, honestly. Hey, listen, you know what I'm saying. As soon as they pass that thing, I'm gonna have my lawyers ready to ready to collect what they owe me. The back pay case. Yeah, yeah, man. You know them 13 jerseys used to be in there, man. I think they're, they're, at least the Jersey Boys. Yeah, the Jersey Boys. You know we got paid for that um the video game stuff. Hey, you don't have to. Oh yeah. They got to back pay a little bit, and the video game looks like it's coming back too. Yeah. So, yeah, no, that's that's, a, that's an interesting conversation. Anything anything else that's going on in the space? Like, um, have you dibbled and dabbled outside of like politics and government? Have you dibbled in like some comm classes or dibbled in some um, I don't know basketball class? Like, talk to us about your educational experiences. UVA is the education space, and you came here for the education. So, yeah. talk to us about that. What have you got uh, out of it, and what do you recommend for like kids coming after you with using the yeah. UVA education? 
uh, one of my favorite classes I took my first year was criminology. Um, just like, but that can go into more like law, uh, like lawyer and stuff. But I found that really cool. Um, my first intended major was uh, was in the Batten School with public policy. Where uh, I didn't get I didn't get into that. That was early my second year. I didn't get into that. So, but I just followed that same track kind of with the politics and government kind of way. Um, I took econ. That was hard. Has that been your hardest class so far? Yeah, that was my hardest class. Those econ classes ain't no joke. And oh yeah, of, there's a couple of econ classes that are, that are, that it takes some some hair off your back. <laughs> that was a summer class though, so it wasn't terrible, but it was. It was oh, okay. mm-hmm. I had to get that credit for it. Where, um, have you? So I guess your fourth year. Have you, are you? Have you graduated? No. No. Still have some credits left out there because you know a lot of people graduate three and a half sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or, um, you know, my my interesting thing is just like school got more fun once I got into the grad classes and things of that nature. Um, so essentially, like small shrinking down the classroom, hyper focused like um, concepts that we're studying and going over, um, like that was way more fun to me. Like my last year that was of college. Than it was at the beginning when we was just like, all right, you know, it's 300 people in the classroom, you know, it's a, it's a, we got the teachers, we got, we got our academic coordinators checking the classes, all the different type of things like that. The person in the front, you know, we can barely see them, you know, what I'm saying? we can barely see them up there in the front. So like that experience versus like the intimate class experience was t- totally different for me. Like, you know, that one I could just like, it was just like get through it. Um, at the beginning and then at the end, I was like really enjoying class, really having concepts. Um, concepts I still use to this day on things that I've written, uh, papers that I've written, like and brought, bring them to like day to day life. Like so, essentially, like later in school, got more fun than it was like dur- at the beginning when we were doing that. So that's interesting that you said criminology has been your most favorite so far, and that was what you took the first year. Um, mm-hmm. And also when we was when we was older, we had basketball class. We got to got to spend a credit on basketball class. I know. So, you know, having fun in that space. Um, so what's been your funnest, what's been your favorite part about coming and deciding to go to UVA? Uh, shoot, honestly, uh, honestly, one of the most fun parts, I don't think it's my favorite, but once you get into that, uh, like once they all move you in, like the 25 first years, they move you all in together and that same, they move us into a same, like one dorm. Yeah, yeah. Doing like our workouts there, our class. And we all like, we're all just together. I think that's my favorite part because you know the dude who was right across from me. I didn't room with him. Actually, my roommate. Yeah, my roommate when I got there, and the guy who was right across from me are my roommates. Uh, my roommates right now. Nope. Uh, yeah, just those relationships. Honestly, you build those relationships with your class, especially. I think that's my favorite part about it. No, that makes sense, man. And hey, me and Max is in the same class. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah those are bonds you can't break uh, for sure. And then obviously you go out there and you. You know, have fun on the. You get you get to go experience games, game environments that not too many people things things have. Not people, not too many people get to experience. So essentially, yeah. like my favorite, like how many people get to go into USC, University of Southern California, walk down the tunnel and then go to work. You know, what I'm saying? like those type of things is things that people don't get to experience, right? Um, win or lose, at the end, of, I don't even remember none of the plays in the game. But essentially, like the concept of just like going out there and being able to do that. Um, was fun. Even though I know Max dropped the pass because he was trying to be sweet out there and had his little head thing on and his eyes got covered up. All kind of crazy Come stuff on. going on out there. Next play, that drink came off. Trash. Never put that back on. Thought he was sweet. <laughs> <laughs> out there for the pregame pictures. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. That. Quick. Out there for the pregame pictures, man. So, no, nah, man, Cohen, that's what's up, man. It's nice to, you know, chop it up with you, chop shop. And just you know, see how things is going uh, out there, man. Is there anything that you want to touch on that we haven't touched on yet? Uh, I don't man. I don't think so. Awesome, Max. You got anything that you want to add to this? Nah, I think we're good to go, man. I appreciate your time. Yeah, man. Yeah. Awesome. You're the first person that's actually still at school has been on the show. So you know, say so you got to feel accomplished for that. We done had you know biscuit on here. Mark Sagan. So, you know, it's a long list of people that have been on the on the podcast. And, and you just you just was the first person that uh that's still active on the on the team. So I hope everybody that's listening, UVA fans, UVA alumni, you know, check out Cohen. Uh Cohen, what's your number? All those different type of things. Where's your 
Instagram. Give us everything we need to know to keep up with you. <laughs> uh, I'm number nine on the field. Uh, last year, I was number nine. Don't know if I could be a different number next year. Hey, I'll be honest. Somebody took my number. I'm gonna be honest with you. <laughs> gotta work. You gotta work. That's about it. It been any this might be some secret information, but just let me know. If you can't say that, just say no. Well, essentially, essentially, yeah, there been any fights over them numbers? <laughs> not while I've been there, no. Not while no, okay, been. cool. Oh, all yeah. right. Because I'm yeah. just saying, like, hey, if I feel, if I find out somebody that went up there and snatched my 13 or something like that, bro, yeah. just because they was up, just because they was in line ahead of me, I'll be hot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be hot, bro. So uh no, nah, that's dope, man. So yeah, sorry, I cut you off, but uh what's your Instagram, all those different type of things like that, so we can follow you. Uh yeah, uh, my Instagram is Ray R E W. I mean R E Y Bravo with two V's and two underscores at the end. Uh my Twitter is Cohen King underscore. Awesome. Solid, man. Well, we wish you luck this year. Stay healthy first and foremost. Win mm-hmm. games, second, second most, third most. <laughs> uh you know, get prepared for whatever you're going to do after after life, after life football's over, man. Um, but like you said at the beginning, give it your best shot to, to do the NFL dream. That's what you want to do. 100% give it your best shot um, and then worry about everything else after. But that's it, man. We'll holler at you guys next week. We out. Mm-hmm.